Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again for yet another deck tech on the stream the other week. It might be in the other night, I can't remember exactly when. We were talking about tribal decks and we were talking about one commander in particular that we could build tribal decks around um, and we decided to go for it. One of my colleagues, um, one of my followers, um, decided it'd be a good idea if they built this and they recommended this to me as the commander and I decided, yeah, we'll go with that as the commander and I'll try and pick a tribe that isn't seen that often. So. Let me introduce to you Mora from the Boundless. Seven mana for a 6 6 legendary shapeshifter. Um, has changelings, so it's every creature type. And when it comes into play, you choose a creature type. Spells of the chosen type you cast cost white, blue, black, red, and green less to cast. It only affects the coloured mana, so bear that in mind. Um, and other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. What tribe did I pick? I went with wizards. Um, <laughs> It's something people do play occasionally. You do see wizards, you see birds, you see all sorts of things. But wizards isn't it? Well, you don't really see wizards. You see knights, you see birds, you see beasts, um, you see warriors. But I decided to try wizards out just for the laugh factor and see how it goes. So the lands are all in. Um, some of the lands you're seeing on here at the moment are they're all multicolored ones. They're all jewels. They're all rares. Um, there isn't anything that doesn't produce coloured mana apart from Field of the Dead's in here. I've got no basics in here. If we come up against someone with Blood Moon or something that changes all the basic lands to a different type, we're, all the lands to a different type, we're in trouble. Um, but yeah, I decided to try it out this way. I'm running a risk, I realise that, but hey, it's got to be done when you're playing something this much fun. So, Mana Ramp, um, we included a few bits and pieces, so I went with Mox Tantalite, Soul Talisman, um, Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Felwild Stone. We've got to get to seven at the end of the day. Um, what well, couple of things I will say, if you're buying this in real life, the deck's quite expensive monetary value wise. On MTGO it's not too bad, especially since Mana Vault was reprinted in Double Masters 2022. The price has come down quite a lot on MTGO, so I recommend you go and have a look and see if you can pick one up while you're here. So that's the ramp side. Let's have a look at some of the st other things. Ponders in, just I wanted a one drop. Ponder was the first one I saw, so I went with Ponder. You can change it for any one you want to. It could be Lightning Bolt, it could be Fatal Push, it could be anything. Anything that costs one, but I went with Ponder. Elective Immortality, because I think a lot of our stuff is going to get destroyed as we go through the game, and therefore I want a way of getting it back in the graveyard, um, from the graveyard into the library, so this is why this is here. And yeah, the extra five life does help a bit with this deck. Going on to the two mana value, um, Cyclonic Rift. It's probably going to be cast with its overload at 7, um, but it gives us a bit of board control, which is quite important with this deck. The first wizard appears at this stage is Omen Speaker. Just remember, when I'm talking about these cards, if Morophon's in play, they're all dropped by one colour mana. Um, so this could be a one drop for one colourless, um, and it scries two for one three, which seemed quite good to me. Snapcasters here. We've got a few instants, we've got a few sorceries that we can... Um, especially further up in the manner when we get there, that we could do this and bring back and use the flashback cost. And you know, it's a wizard deck. With Snapcaster Mage is probably the most famous wizard of all time from my point of view, so I had to have one in here. Timestream Navigate is in. Hopefully we'll have Ascend, we'll have the 10 permanents, we get to take the extra turn. Counter Spell for a little bit of control. Jadal Ghoul, Ghoul, yeah, Ghoul Caller of Nephilim. Um, I was amazed this was a wizard, didn't realise it was a wizard, but hey, it's in now and it gives us a zombie token, so all good. Um, far seeks in, we do have some of the lands in that have land types, we can go and find one. Um, having got to be basic, so might as well have this in and get on with it. Gaze Blessing is a little bit more protection against uh, mill decks. There's a few mill decks around at the moment. If this gets milled from the top of our library, we get to shuffle our graveyard and this back into our library, so hopefully we'll never have to play it, but if we do, draws a card, we get three cards into our library, it's not the end of the world. The next wizard comes in, and obviously if Morophon's in play, this one's absolutely free. It's um, Kaywin Intinerant Meddler. Um, it's a friendly card, to be fair. People tend to leave you alone if you've got this in play, because they like gaining a life and drawing an extra card every so often. Um, Celestia Guild of Mages in. It gives us something to ramp our mana into when we get high up on the mana. Again, it's free if Morophon's in play. So it seemed like a good plan to me. Likewise, Quandrix Apprentice. Um, we have a few instances of sorceries. We don't have a hundred loads of them, but we have enough to make it interesting, and this is why it's here. Um, get some lands into play, that's fine. Um, even if it goes on a hand, it's all good. Um, Thrasios, Triton Heroes here. Again, it's free if we've got Morphon in play. The 
Four, scribe one, reveal the top card of your library if it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield, tap to otherwise draw cards, really nice. Um, it does tend to get killed quite quickly, but oh well, that's the way it goes. Likewise, Zimor Quandrex Prodigies here for the same reason. Um, drawing the cards even nicer, and if we control eight or more lands, we get to draw two cards, so it seemed like a bit of a no brainer to me. Aven Mind Sensor, um, it's a wizard. I didn't realise this was a wizard. There's a lot of creatures I've got in this deck I didn't realise were wizards. Um, and it kind of taxes your opponent a little bit, hence why it's here. Iron Crag Pyromancer's in. Um, when we draw our second card each turn, it deals three damage to any target. We do have ways of drawing cards, so it's worth having it in here. And it is a wizard, and it'll cost us two mana for a zero four when Morophon's in play. Growing right to help get the mana on the go. Um, hopefully hit some of the creatures. It's all good. Reflector Mage will cost us one mana if Morophon's in play, otherwise three mana to return the most annoying creature on the battlefield to their opponent's hand so they can't cast the next turn's a good plan from my point of view. Ludwig Necro Alchemist is in. Um, at the beginning of each player's end step, that player that player may draw a card of a player other than you lost life this turn, so yeah, that's all good. Get a bit of extra card draw for everyone, keeps everyone happy. And Wistful Selkie will cost one blue or green with Morophon in play. Um, and even if we haven't, it's only three mana draw card, it's a 2-2, two, two. it's still a wizard, so I'll put it in. Um, Inga Runeyes is in. Um, in Spoutfield Scry 3, when it dies, draw three cards if three or more creatures died this turn. So, you know, if it gets Wrath of the Way, you'll get your card draw. Archmaid Emeritus is in, it's a wizard, we've got a few instances of sorceries, extra card draw. Talaran's in, um, when we cast our instances of sorceries, we get some little Drake tokens. Again, like I said, this isn't a serious deck. I will point this out now. We're fairly well into when we what seven, eight minutes into the video at this stage. This is not a serious deck. This is a fun deck. Um, hence Talarand's in. You can build a whole deck around Talarand and just have loads and loads of instance of sorceries and just win the game that way. But I'm doing it for fun and games, and it's a wizard. I want to keep my theme going. Raph Caption Ships Mage is in, it's quite nice, it's got flash, it has flying, and because if you've noticed a lot of the creatures we've put in are legendary, and they are historic, and therefore they can come in with flash, which is really very good. So, but it's a 3-3 three, three for 4 mana that flies, so we can't complain. Instant block is not the worst plan in the world either. Um, for less, a Fang of the Silver Quills here, um, it's got Mentor, which is nice, and also whenever a non-creature token creature you control dies, you get a nice load of little 2 one, one inkling tokens coming to play, so I'm quite happy with this. Dusk Mantle Seer is in next. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, each player reveals the top card of their library and loses life equal to that card's mana villain, who then puts it in their hand, so it's a nice little drain effect on your opponents for 4 mana. Adrex and Nev Twin Casters, we do have ways of making some tokens, um, but it's a wizard at the end of the day, hence why it's included in this deck. I'll come to one of the ways we've got of making wizards um, tokens in a minute. Fathom Mage is nice. Um, it evolves, and when it evolves, you get to draw a card. Um, so yeah, definitely in. Um, Kid in Choosing of Crufix is one of the creatures I've included just for the ramp mana. You know, worst things worse. You draw a card each turn. It taps for one colorless mana. If you can draw a few cards each turn, you're going to get a lot of mana out of this quite quickly. So it's worth including from my point of view. Hence, Prime Speaker of Vanifar's in here. We can go and sack our creatures off, get something a little bit better, you know. If our Omen Speaker's done its job, we can always sacrifice it to go and say, get our Reflector Mage or Ludwig or Wellsville Silky, so on and so forth. Again, it's a wizard. Yes, it's an ooze wizard, which is an elf ooze wizard. I'm really not sure what an elf and an ooze did to create such a creature, but hey, we're in. Obscura Interceptor's in. Um, another one with Flash. When it comes in, it can eyes. When it comes in playing, when it can eyes, we turn up to one target spell to its owner's hand. It's Kind of a fancy counter spell to a certain extent, but you know, nine times out of ten, it'll be a 4 2 flash with lifelink, which we can't complain about. Um, Marchesh is in, <laughs> it's a wizard at the end of the day, and it dethrones, and all the other creatures have dethroned. And then, whenever a creature you control the plus one plus one counter on it dies, we turn that card to the battlefield under you control at the beginning of the next end step. Gonna have a lot of creatures attacking, hopefully, the person with the highest life total. They all get a nice load of plus one plus one counters, and we get them all back when people blow them up. So let's hope it works. Disciple of the Ring is next. Um, yeah, we not like I say we haven't got many instances of sorceries. We can exile them. Um, we can pump things, tap things, untap things, counter non-target creature spells for you know. Let's say pay two more. Again, it's a wizard. Is it the right wizard to have in the deck? Probably not. 
do I mind? No, I don't. But it's there, so we'll have a bit of fun with it. Um, Riona Fire Dancer, you've probably seen the deck tech about this. There's a little gameplay video a while back about it where it went completely berserk on me. Hence why I've included it. Hence it's a wizard. Um, yeah, it's the worst comes to worst. You're going to get an extra copy if you've cast a couple of the instants and sorceries. You may get two copies, so yeah, it's all good. Primal Commands, one of the few sorceries. Um, Bounce something, get seven life, shuffle your graveyard into their library, search for a creature card, reveal it, put it in our hands, quite good. Especially when we got this in play, and I'll come to one of the little combos in a minute. I've put Mirari's Wake in, um, to pump our creatures and help with the mana, because we're going to be casting a lot of expensive spells as things go on. Bring to lights in, um, yeah. With all the different mana types we've got and all the different colours over here, getting this to be its five mana and go and get something that costs five or less to put into play is really quite easy. Garth One Eye is in this deck. I'd like to point out if Morophon's in play, this is a free five five that you can then tap when it's lost its summoning sickness to get a brain geezer, a terror, a dragon, a regrowth, or a black lotus. It's worth it, everybody. Believe it or not, it's really worth it. Right. Arcans is the omnipotent, need a little bit of draw, card draw, and it comes back to our hand. Yeah, it's expensive, it's five mana basically in this deck um, when Morophon's in play, but it's worth the attempt. Edge in the Shifting Flame, <laughs> whenever you cast a spell, put the cards in your hand on the bottom of your library in any order, then draw that many cards. Yeah, let's do it. This is a fun deck, it's a wizard. I'll just click on it, the uh, Sphinx Wizard, just so if we can prove it. Two versions of Niv Mizzix, we've got Draco Genius and we've got Paran. Um, draw cards, deal damage, you know the combo this works with, so it's there. Casualties of War to blow things up, a little bit more board control if we need it. Prime Speaker Zenga is in here as well. Um, that card draws very, very nice, thank you very much. Nevril Herbal Titan from the original Commander Legends set. Yeah, Hexproof from Artifacts, Creatures and Enchantments, and when he dies you can blow the world up. Seemed like a really good plan to me. Dragon Mage is a wizard. Um, it's probably going to end up costing 6 most of the time. And when you deal combat damage to a player, each player discards their hand, then draws 7. Obviously with immortal Elixir of Immortality we can shuffle everything back in, so it's a wizard and it's a dragon. Why not play it? Genesis Ultimatum, we're playing the right mana. Um, get the top five, penny number of permits onto the battlefield, and then the rest into grave into your hand. Exile Genesis Ultimatum. Likewise, Eerie Ultimatum, when everything does get blown up, um, we can get it all back into play with this, because, you know, it's different permanent, any number of permanent cards with the different names. Everything in the Commander deck apart from land, well, even in the land in this deck has all got different names. Um, seemed like a no brainer to me. Army of the Damned, I needed something that would create blockers, hence why this is in here. I probably should take this out, but I haven't found a wizard yet that I want to play up here, so I decided to play Army of the Damned. Um, actually, I'm sitting here talking about this. Let's just see if we can change it while you're all here. Um, not Twilight School, because that returns everyone else's. Uh, it's probably going to be black. Dun, 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 dun. I think we're actually we're going to drop Army of the Damned here and now and we're going to go with Finale of Eternity um, it destroys the creatures and this if we do it um, get everyone's creatures back so let's go with that instead that sounds like a bad plan yeah see change while I'm recording a video don't say I don't help <laughs> um, Blasphemous Act control the board seems like another cunning plan to me 13 damage for every creature in play why not let's go for it and see if it works or not um, final of vitality eternity I've just talked about crackle of power was a win condition um, this is a pure reason for including it I'm hoping that we'd have enough mana that we can get this going off for where the X's are maybe 2, 3 so 11 mana um, if X is 3, 5 times X damage to up to it, X, uh, X targets, 5 times 3 is 15. You can you know, knock on all your opponents on the head for 15 and a couple of the big, um, you know, if we can get better than that, all well and good. But I'd be aiming to get these at 3 at the moment, so 11. Um, if we can get up to 15 mana and do a couple of targets as well, I'll be even happier, but we'll see. Final one, Villainous Wealth. There's always one opponent who seems to have a lot more powerful deck than you've got. Go and nick their cards. Build this up, make it as big as you can, and go and nick them. Wizards do nick stuff at the end of the day, hence why it's villainous wealth. So, you know, that's why it's in here. Anyway, that's my Morophon deck. 
Is it competitive? No, don't play this in a CDH game. I would be playing this in sort of like power level four or five, maybe uh, push six. I don't think it's better than that, but it's a good laugh. Um, and I'm going to enjoy playing it. I'm going to try and record a gameplay video with it um, later on and get that up as well. So you may see that appearing on the YouTube channel at some stage in the future. So keep your eyes out for it. If you do, I'll link back to this deck tech on it. Um, but that's it really. That's my Morophon deck. I hope you enjoyed this really quick video. This is probably one of the short ones I've done for a while. But I do want to ask some things. Please, if you watch this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm desperately, you know, I've got, as I record this, I'm still sitting at 29 subscribers on YouTube. I'd really like to get up to 50. Yeah, it doesn't do anything for me on YouTube, you know. I don't think, I, you know, in an ideal world I'd get a thousand. No, I'm not pushing for that. Let's push for 50. We'll go up in nice increments. So please hit the follow button. Hit the like button. Yeah, helps the algorithm a little bit. Um, but the main thing I'd really like you to do after you've done that is also go and look down below go and click on the Twitch thing. Um, come and follow me on Twitch. I'm at 100 followers on my Twitch at the moment. I'd really like to try and get up to 150 by October, early October when my birthday hits. It'd be quite a nice birthday present for me. Um, you haven't got to come and subscribe. Obviously, if you've got a subscription, you want to chuck it my way because you're enjoying what I'm doing, I'm not going to say no to it. And I'll be eternally thankful. Anyone who does subscribe gets a little VIP thing next to them and I'm trying to work out some emotes that the subscribers can use. Um, but... In the mean, you know, but just that follow really helps me out. You know, I'm trying to get up to 150 just so I know that people are there and I get a bit more people taking part in my streams when I'm there. So that's my little begging bit over and done with. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any comments, like I say, leave them below. But I'll be back soon, hopefully with a bit of gameplay, and I will catch up with you hopefully on my stream as well. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.